Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. And today's video is going to be on shadows, but to create shadows, we first need some forms. So I'm going to time lapse this first part, so you can slow this down if you need to, if you want to draw along. Um, I believe that option's on YouTube here now, so. Um, but at any rate, this is just me working out some forms um, so that we can have something to apply some shadows to. So I'm using Manga Studio 5 here, exceptional program. Except for the fact it lags a little bit when I'm recording. Other than that, it is fantastic. But anyways, um, so yeah, first getting some forms down here, doing my uh, soft erase and redraw effect that I do quite often, and uh, just trying to get my proportions and my anatomy correct. Um, and I'm just going with like a muscular type, you know, dude or whatever for this part. Um, you know, this could be, we'll do shapes of shadows or shadowing on uh, other things like clothing and that, but I figured for this one, uh, we'll just do it on the musculature since that's majority of what people struggle to uh, get figured out. So I figured that might be the most beneficial. And also draw like a female's face in here too, just so we got like, uh, I can show you the difference of how you might look at shading uh, the female face versus uh, male musculature because there's a, a different way to, you know, generally approach it. But, of course, this is all just the way that I do it. Always, uh, you know, do it in your own style, in your own fashion, but just take what I give you here and kind of work from it. And threw a goofy little face in there for you just to kind of make you giggle. Hopefully there was a giggle in there. But, yeah, just um, sketching it out, convert it to blue line. I really like doing that inside Manga Studio. It's, uh, it's neat that it has that as a quick feature. Um, I actually used to really enjoy drawing just in blue line on Bristol board, so it... It feels like home in that regard. So there's the uh, there's the character. Now I'll, I'll sketch in the female face just real quick. Um, but she comes out a little bit too uh, mean looking. I probably should have spent a little more time on the face here. But you know, this videos uh, these videos get kind of lengthy, and it seems like the longer videos don't perform as well. But then I get people that say, "Hey Rob, we want longer videos." So I really just don't get it. But you ask and you shall receive. So, so from this stage, we're almost there. I'll finish up this line work and then we'll go to real time and I'll explain how it adds shadows to these uh, gnarly drawings of mine. Thank you. Okay, so now I've got some basic forms to work with and I'll start uh, showing you how to lay in the shadows, uh, the purpose of this video. So we'll start off with uh, an overly tense guy right here. Um, so essentially, you know, and I, I just left him raw muscle, obviously, because I want to show you how you can incorporate some textures with the shadowing, uh, some, some things like that. But first, what I would do is start laying in the, the bulk of the shadow. So what you want to do after you've got your shape and, and your form figured out is designate where your light source is. And we can do that by simply saying, you know, here's our light source, something like this. And what layer am I on here? Actually, I'm going to go ahead and add a layer. I guess I could add it over top of all these. And this will be our shadows. Let me name this shadows. Okay. So our light source, I'll picture is hitting, we'll say it's hitting, you know, like this on the character. So with that in mind, as we go, um, and you know, it's obviously going to be above the uh, character a bit more, but the arrow just reminds me of the, you know, direction it's heading. So the, the next part you want to figure out is how far in shadow is this character? So I'll keep this relatively basic because I want this to be more an easy to follow understanding of how you can do some of your own shadows. So what I'm going to do is start drawing in kind of these these bulk shadows. And I'm going to keep the lines very basic, easy to follow, like I said. You know, a little bit. Let me zoom in and show you here. A little bit under the ear. A little bit behind the chin. The shape of the uh, the chin on the neck. Something like that. And we'll just fill these in. Normally, if I was doing this for myself, I might throw the little uh, X's in there. But just to uh, help you visualize, 
what I'm doing, I'll just fill them in. Um, you know, you want to be real sparingly with the shadows on the face. Um, you can get away with more shadows on the face on the male characters. That's actually why I drew a male and female, um, you know, just a female upper body or whatever. But I want to show you the difference and how I would recommend, you know, trying to apply shadows to the, uh, the female characters. So, like I said, you can get away with more shadows on the male's face, um, but you still want to be a bit sparing with it. Uh, start off light and add little bits as you go because uh, if you kind of overdo it, you're either insinuating that the character is in a very dark setting or, you know, there's kind of this uh, eerie, you know, maybe um, emotion going on in the artwork. So, if you are trying to convey that, then yeah, of course, you know, lay in lots of nice heavy shadows um, in which case you could start doing more like this like you know you could shadow the whole side of the face uh, you would actually go under the brow on the cheek maybe something like that and I'll fill that in and show you and then I'll control Z back out of it this would be like if you were doing more of a nighttime setting and you'd block in a lot of bigger bulk shadows and, and that's just my opinion but that's that's how I do it if I'm trying to do a night setting. I'll say this is in the day, regular, you know, kind of lighting, so not huge shadows. Now, the other thing is this. If you're really trying to accentuate a certain feature, then you can do that by, you know, deepening the shadows. So, say here's our cheekbone of the character, and we want to bring that out further. Then you can bring the shadow further down like this, and it's going to pop this form out more. So, um... You know, just something to keep in mind. And I, I would, again, I would use that sparingly. I wouldn't go around and do every feature that way. You know, I wouldn't, um, you know, if I if I did the nose, I guess it would be like, let's see. Yeah, that's too straight. Hold on. Something like that. Um, something else I always try to make sure to do is make sure that the line isn't completely straight. So just add like a bend in there or some line work or whatever you got to do so that it doesn't look like uh, just an extremely straight line like that right there. Um, I'm not going to add that shadow there though. Let me see. And probably a little one off the cheek. And I kind of do this. I just play around. I'm not extremely confident with shadows. That's actually why um, I was hesitant about doing this video. But I've been asked this a few times and you know I've done a few shadow videos but not much. Um, and that's why, because I, you know, it's one of those things I, I shy away from. Um, but I need to I need to quit doing that with my art and get, you know, more confident with it. And this is the only way to get confident with anything in art is repetition. So this is where I need to bear down and, and uh, hit it hard, you know, do the homework and all that. Study all the great artists that are, uh, that are really confident with shadows. It's the best way to improve your art, in my opinion. You know, even ink ink some of their work or something, you know, because then you start to really kind of get a feel and build a, you know, a more intimate understanding of their work by uh, seeing how they approach certain things. So, um, again, if we we're trying to bring out certain muscle groups, you know, um, we can add the, uh, the shadows around them. Um, I do recommend not going around tracing every single muscle group. You'll, you'll actually just take the... Um, Take the intensity off of the the shadowing itself so you don't want to do that you want to basically use it sparingly but just get in there and you know start pushing those forms out you know and, and I'll show you what I do here in this uh, the sternum almost every time it's kind of a cheat I feel at this point but it works I'll throw this kind of rounded shape of shadow in here like that and to me, it just pushed this area out further. Uh, see, I want the chest to look a little bit more uh, protruded out. I can throw a little shadow right here to separate the chest from the uh, the rib cage or sternum a little bit more. Same thing, I can bring some of that shadow down here. Now, to me, the chest widens out right here, bulks up, so I can have a little bit heavier shadow, almost like a heavy line weight right over there.
and this one uh, by adding the shadow here it not only pushes the arm forward it uh, it even shows uh, more attention to the uh, the next piece here so you always do this kind of light dark light dark thing and it it pushes the artwork um, forward and back off the paper so another another good thing to keep in mind which is you know pretty much self-explanatory but um, so forgive me if I'm saying things that are just extremely basic but um, I feel that's the way you know for some people to learn um, I know that you know when I try to tried to find uh, a lot of information on this growing up uh, it was tough to get the the very detailed uh, info so that's the way that I try to teach I try to be over simplistic uh, in everything that I explain all right so if I want the shoulder piece right here to stand out um, this this is a big enough muscle group where I would actually trace a bit of the the shoulder here and I'll show you why I think that I can make the shoulder pop out and accentuate the muscle group really well if I segment a little bit but I do an overall big kind of bulked shadow at the base of it um, now I would recommend not doing that each time like I wouldn't do that say tricep bicep you know you can but uh, I don't know I mean I scribble that in real light but it, it almost takes the attention away from the shoulder now so if I go back and I keep in mind okay what do I want to look the most powerful to me the shoulder should look more powerful than the bicep and the the tricep uh, especially in a pose like this or this particular perspective so I think what I would do is maybe put a shadow uh, showing the separation here uh, maybe a little bit on the back of the tricep here kind of around the, the entire arm out um, maybe some right here but to me it looks better doing that than like I said adding those same shadows underneath each uh, muscle mass there it's gonna make the shoulder not look as uh, influential or it's gonna take the attention away from the uh, mass of the shoulder and you know you really just gotta play with this and develop your own style there's no insanely right or wrong way to do this I, I, I don't think there is um, you just have to play with it and see what you know what sticks you know what you like you know and then uh, to me if this was like a suit right here I would show a lot more um, shadows in the darker materials so we'll say that this uh, this brief part is like you know just a, a darker you know part of the suit so what I'll do there is immediately fill in more of the overall area And I'll show some of the wrinkles of the material and also using that as an opportunity to throw in more uh, shapes of shadows in those wrinkles and this is what I was talking about how I want to show you a little bit of texturing because that's a another part that uh, I think ties in really well with your shadows is learn to uh, learn to texture your artwork quite a bit it, uh, it really gives a lot more um, interest to you know regular black and white artwork and I, I draw for uh, my comic book is currently black and white so um, I look to add as many textures as I can because of that you know I think it's a bit different if you have the ability to uh, take your book to color uh, then you, maybe you can cheat in some areas or, or not cheat but you necessarily don't have to worry as much because you can look at a certain area of the artwork and go well I'm just going to color that later anyways All right, I don't want to get into cross hatching yet but I'll end up uh, texturing this a bit more to uh, have it stand out as a you know separate material. Uh, another thing I always do is I put like these little lines right here, 
which you know a lot of people do i've seen that in a lot of art but uh to me it helps again push that form down and then if you want to like make each one of these uh, abdomen muscles stick out a real easy way is to just throw in a, a dark shadow under each one and it doesn't even have to be a very large uh, shadow to accomplish this Same thing with the chest muscle here before I get down into the legs more. Um, you can either do a large uh, shape of shadow like this. Here, I'll just fill this in real quick and show you what I'm talking about. Something like that. You can maybe leave a little bit of opening of uh, what I would call like a bounced light. Uh, let me rotate this. And then you could do a little bit of line work right in here. So it, it basically shows that, you know, it's not entirely dark right there. You're getting just a little bit of balanced light. You know, it's a real quick, easy effect to do. And I usually come back with a little bit of line work right here. A little swoosh line like that. You know, whatever. These are all... Anything that you see me do like this right here, that's just style choices. So, you know, you basically, you know, just figure out what you think looks cool with your line work. And even even past what looks cool, what's what's uh, fast for you to produce um, and what reduces down really well. That's something to always remember. You know, if you zoom back in your artwork like this and it starts to look funky, um, then, you know, you might be doing something wrong. So it's good to always analyze uh, that part of your artwork too because you know ultimately it's going to be reduced down uh, unless it's just I guess unless it's just entirely a digital comic maybe it'll uh, you know be zoomed in but you know you also got to look at how quickly you can produce something um, you know be realistic with your uh, your time frame and your deadlines so so same thing I'll do that same little line work there not much because this part of the chest uh, you know would dip in more it wouldn't be as as predominant so i'll shade this side so it'd be the, the heavier side of the chest something like that but again it's, these are all just choices yeah and it's good to uh to make sure that you don't let your line work overpower your your shape of shadows uh, you know it's real easy to overdo the line work and kind of get uh, a little bit cross hatch happy and um, then next thing you know your your work looks uh, unbalanced and that's mainly because you gotta you gotta take care of everything in its appropriate um, distinction or whatever like uh, how to say that um, the shapes of shadows are more important than the lines. That's the way I would, I would look at it. And then the overall shape of the form is more important than the shadows. So, you know, that's just my opinion, but take it as you will. And you see I'm being really light with these shadows. I mean, they, they're bordering almost just heavy line weight. But I'd rather do that... Um, you know, and then get a feel for what, what I'm trying to do with the character, the the uh, intensity of the light source and all that. And then if I want, I can go back and strengthen these. But I'm kind of just figuring out my forms at this stage. You know, like to me, if I wanted to round out this, this form more, you know, we know our light source is over here. I'll use the chest as a diagram almost. Um, I could probably start filling in or blocking in a really large uh, shadow on the back of all this. So let me try that. And it would round out this form a bit more. So I'm also kind of texturing a little bit in there, just trying to make it not look so boring, you know. And 
And that's where, you know, suits, I think, really help um, materials that you're adding onto the character uh, because it's easy to take something that otherwise might look kind of boring and spruce it up a bit with, uh, you know, the, the material of the suit and the design of the suit. Well, I wanted to show you this character in a very basic setting. You know, I didn't want to do too much cover-up work, so that's why I got uh, got this basic uh, character with not much of a, a design to him. And I get in a bad habit there of sketching my shadows sometimes. You're supposed to draw them in. Um, from all the you know stuff I've ever found with people that have more knowledge than me explaining it uh, they say it's better to draw in the shadows um, so keep that in mind I, like I said I am sketching some of men but I probably I probably shouldn't be all right what else can I explain here that would be beneficial um, Something else to keep in mind is, well, two things, I guess. Uh, one thing I'm going to show you is if you're, say, in this area right here, I'm kind of hesitant about what I want to see, how much shadowing I want to see on the back of the hand. I feel like shading in this entire part, right? And the reason being is I think it would just add a little bit more interest. You know, otherwise the character is looking boring and kind of too evenly shaded here and there. So I want to air, uh, jump in a couple larger shadows just for whatever re you know reason. Um, so here's my thing. It, you know, with digital, the beauty of it is if you're worried about something not looking right, just add a layer. I'll go ahead and shade this in the way I was talking about. So it's really messy and ugly, but let me see if I can refine it. No, it's just ugly. But what I wanted to see is what it would look like if I shaded that. I think if it looked this way, the hand would need to be tilted back more or something something's not right about it so I'm just going to delete that but the beauty of adding that extra layer um, I guess it worked out because I was able to show you how I would back out of something like that and I didn't you know destroy the direction I was heading before I decided to add the layer so just that's one quick tip um, the other thing is to practice drawing things uh, when you're doing your shadows to practice drawing things like you don't see the outside line and let me explain that I'll add another layer to show you what I mean there okay so obviously this part of the hand I could easily just trace the contour and do something like that same thing here just repeating that process now the other way to look at it is if there was a shadow here on this part of the hand and it rounded into this part of the knuckle and then over to this part of the hand uh, and you were to repeat that process, you're essentially saying that you don't really need a line there. You're, you're making that line disappear from the top, top of the finger. And once you start looking at the objects like that more and more, you'll realize there's areas where you can uh, exclude the line work altogether, and your eye will just pick up on the shadows and fill in the blanks. Um, I think that's when you have a lot more of a solid confidence on doing shadows. And you know it'll it'll start really showing in your artwork so like if I do a shape of a shadow here and, and I guess this isn't the greatest example but say I wanted to get rid of some of the 
There's my original character right here. Uh, See, so I wanted to show that there was an extreme light source on the side of the arm here. I could get rid of some of this line work here, even erase parts of it pretty, uh, pretty heavily. And you know, all it does is it makes it takes your eye away from that line as much, and it lets the shadow work a little bit um, more influentially or whatever. It's it takes uh, predominance in that area. So you know. It's hard to explain right here. Um, the way it was shown to me, or I saw it on a video or whatever, is like if you were to take blades of grass, like this, and draw other blades of grass behind it, omitting parts of it where it, you know, it hits the light. So basically, they would be solid here behind this blade of grass, but where the light hits between the two blades of grass, you wouldn't draw that in. So that's like a basic interpretation of it so if that even makes sense to you but so like here it would, you would skip draw skip and you see how the negative starts to, to come through or whatever um, one artist that does it really well uh, to date or whatever that's around is uh, David Finch uh, might even been where I you know I'm picking up some of this uh, information and the other that uh, I know I definitely seen some of this is uh, Bern Hogarth, you know, if you watched any of my videos, I talk about that uh, that artist a lot. He was very influential. Um, you know, God rest his soul, he's not not with us anymore. But uh, his books uh, were very influential to me growing up. So um, his dynamic light and shade book is uh, is really powerful. So I would definitely you know suggest that to anybody that's wanting to get better at this stuff. And I, I really do got to practice my shadows because I should, I should have a better understanding of all this. Um, I just don't do a lot of, a lot of heavy shadows in my work, I guess, like I should. But one of the things I do notice is that it really helps the work um, jump off the page. So it, it is necessary. step back and you know so you can see the character starting to take a little bit of life you know starting to have a little bit more um, definition I probably should have saved it without the shadows to really show the difference but um, hopefully you can see that starting to take shape um, so now the legs which can always be tricky um, you know again you don't want to go around and trace every muscle uh, it looks too segmented if you do that too unnatural um, but you you know if you have a very cut character like I drew here, um, then it's kind of hard to to not want to do that. So you gotta you gotta become inventive on how to uh, connect these shadows. Um, one good way to do it is to treat the entire object, you know, uh, you know, the entire leg as one object and not not draw it as as segments, obviously. Um, which I'm still managing to look a little too segmented. Um, but I can bulk up the shadow here on the back of the leg, back of this part of the leg, and see how it starts to connect them all together more. So instead of having all these loose lines everywhere, um, I start to connect the shadows and make them work together a little bit better. And then from there, do some of the line work. So if I do the shadow here, have it connect here, and then treat this all as one shadow, I could leave a tiny little, you know, again, bounce light. It's nice to throw in every now and then, wherever you can. Uh, again, something you don't want to overdo. You really don't want to overdo any of the, any effects, you know. You, that's, that's really the what separates uh, 
guys that really know how to do this stuff well is they have a nice balance of all the effects. They don't overdo any one thing. If you notice, I try to uh, always um, bounce the line around just a little bit uh, versus just making these smooth, rounded shapes on everything like that. Um, I actually have a hard time not doing that. That was uh, one of my one of my things that I noticed uh, about my earlier work. Every muscle was one of these shapes right there. So you definitely want to stay away from that. Um, and then after you do these kind of uh, you know inconsistent shapes or whatever for a while, um, making sure not to repeat them on the same on every muscle group like I was starting to do right there. Um, then you can come back with your line work and make it a little bit more random even still by adding a certain texturing to your line work. Okay, so we'll say that's good for the legs. It looks like I shaded the legs a little bit more than I did the upper body. Um, that's fine for now. Um, another thing to keep in mind, if the character's more leaned over, say the legs are tucked up or the you know, chest is leaned over more in a battle pose or whatever, keep in mind that oftentimes that's a good, good time when you can actually shadow in the whole midsection, like say like this. I'm not going to fill it in, but you know, hopefully you can see what I'm talking about there. And you'd shade all this in and then do your line work out. Um, that's a neat effect to do. Um, in four shortened poses. I'm not going to do it here because he's standing upright. It doesn't make much sense, but um, it does look good when the uh, the character is hunched over or, you know, in a battle pose or whatever. And here I just go back through and do a little bit of uh, cross hatching and line work. Nothing too crazy, but enough to. Uh, Make it stand out a little differently. And forgive me, this is taking so long. I don't know what it is, but my uh, my Manga Studio lags a bit when I record. It really ticks me off. That's actually why I do majority of my recordings now in uh, Sketchbook Pro. Uh, and it sucks because I really like Manga Studio, but for some reason the responsiveness is just a little bit off. Um, and I'm running like a really powerful Mac MacBook Pro, so it's kind of kind of silly because it lags on nothing else I do. I can be doing a digital painting at, you know, some crazy megabyte file and no lag whatsoever. So eventually I need to figure that out because it, it sways me from wanting to do videos in this software and that's that's a shame. So if you guys are wondering when, you know, you've been watching my channel, why I've done less, that's uh, in this program, that's exactly why right there. Okay. So, and I just keep picking at it, keep adding little shadows here, I try to, you know, and I would probably shade this, uh, erase this down and redraw them one more time so they don't look too plain, but that's just me trying to be, you know, picky about my art and get it just right. Um, I'm just trying to explain how I would attack or approach shadows. Um, you know, and then you can go back through and you can start defining more planes on your artwork by, you know, adding your your line work a little bit more detailed and you know, getting creative with uh, how that looks in conjunction with your shadows. And that's, you know, like I said, that's kind of style choices. You know, like I would take some lines right here, maybe under the neck. And it's lagging again, which is awesome. You know, just little things like that. Okay, so before I bring this to a close, I got the girl's face up here, which is kind of gnarly. I should have refined her face a little bit more. But hopefully this will look better after I shade it, not worse. We'll see. So I had another layer for that. And what I would do here is um, the reason why I wanted to show you a female, um, you know, head and neck or whatever is to show you that you can get away with more shadows on the guy. Uh, the women, you have to be a little bit more sparing uh, and subtle with the, your shadows. Unless uh, she's like some villainess uh, 
you know, witch or whatever, or, you know, evil temptress or whatever she is, but um, then you can do a little bit more to kind of accentuate that feel in the artwork, but you don't want to do like, uh, you know, heavy shadows um, for no reason. It'll basically make her look, for one, uh, older, and two, you know, just a little bit less appealing. So if you notice, a lot of uh, artists will actually do just tiny little shadows on the female, especially the female face. Just like a little shadow under the nose, you know, little shadows off the uh, indents of the eyes, under the brow, you know, just little accent shadows. Um, so that, that takes a little bit of getting used to, um, but it definitely looks more appealing overall in the artwork if you do it right. So I would do like, you know, and the hair doesn't matter. You can go crazy with the hair. Uh, in fact, I oftentimes do because what it does is it allows you to frame the, uh, the female's face. So if you do like all these, you know, really crazy, cool textures in the hair and shadows, uh, it actually accentuates the face more because it, it frames it in with a, uh, a border effect. So you can get in there and do all kinds of neat shadows and line work in the hair. And a good one, a good way to shade hair, uh, it's real easy or whatever, is just kind of do these, uh, these little shapes like this. You know, say something like that. I'll usually leave like little line breaks in between them, which really, it's digital, so it doesn't matter. You can just fill it back in with, uh, turn your pencil or pen white or use the eraser, which actually I recommend using the eraser because if you happen to want to color the piece uh, it's messed up when you paint white in there and then you got to go back through and worry about that but if you just get in the habit of using your eraser which your eraser can become any pen that you want uh, then you don't have to worry about that so a little, little tip there for you so yeah this is a quick easy way to shade hair Do some of that on this side of the uh, the bulk of the hair too. It's always good to remember to think of the hair like flowing ribbons. That's another little trick. Same thing with the lines. You don't want to overdo the line work on the uh, the female characters either. So as where the guy I could easily get in there and start doing like, you know, more lines under the eyes or the side of the nose or whatever. I wouldn't do that to the female character over here just to, you know, keep that kind of pretty look. Even though, I don't know, this chick doesn't look pretty. She looks pretty mean actually. But um, but that's uh, that's just something I would also keep in mind. Be really light with your line work. I would just kind of repeat everything that I, you know, talked about on uh, on the other character as far as trying to uh, define some shadows there, kind of drawing some shapes. Um, now you want to do a little bit of texturing in the hair as you go. And when in doubt, erase and try again, rinse, repeat. Or do like, a, you know, turn it to blue line and then do another layer over top. Almost every time your, your next sketch is going to get a little bit better. Um, if not, just take a break, walk away, then come back and try again. But generally, if you're in the zone, every time you redraw, uh, you'll see something that you could have made just a little bit better. And that uh, that oftentimes will, will help you to get to something that you like. So I've got a couple little shadows off the hair. 
Maybe a little bit under the brow, not much. I don't want to overdo it. Uh, I do the shadow on the the eye, which I'd already filled in, but um, and you can also do a shadow under the lip. I wouldn't recommend filling it all the way in, but the top lip will always be in more shadow than the bottom lip. So you know you can fill it in, but um, you got to do it just right, or it looks um, I don't know. Just I would probably recommend just uh, doing a little bit of shadow to it, like. I'm going to try something like, like that. That's not really a shadow, but a glare. But I think that looks better than filling that entire top lip. And uh, you can darken the bottom line of the top lip. Something like that to give it a little bit more form. And I think for the, uh, the nose, I would actually go back on what I sketched there. So that's before the shadows, after the shadows. And just merge all this down. Yeah, let me do that. Command E, merge it all down. Okay. So, like with the nose, I would probably get rid of the top line work here. Yeah, I like that better. So, and I probably shade under the bottom lip just a little bit. Yeah, so at any rate, there it is. Um, I'll have to do more videos on shadows as I as I build my confidence with it. I honestly feel like I need to really, you know, dedicate some serious time to my shadows um, so that I can explain these videos better. Because, you know, if you notice when I'm getting quiet there, that's <laughs> I'm just basically thinking. I'm looking at my artwork trying to go, okay, what's not right about this? What can I do to make it better? But all the while trying to explain a, uh, you know, video tutorial. So um, that's one of the things where it tells me I just need to dedicate more time and be a little bit more knowledgeable for this particular topic. So let me pan back there. And it's always good to look at the stuff from way back because, again, that's, that's where you're trying to take it. And especially with the shadows because uh, that's, you know, you might think that your shadows look great from up close. Uh, but then you pan back and when they blend together, they don't say blend together well or, you know, you did all this unnecessary work um, in the hair or whatever and it was a waste of time. So that's where zooming back is a very good habit to form uh, when doing this stuff so that you can look into your artwork a little bit more clearly. And, you know, flip it back and forth, all that good stuff. So at any rate, hopefully this video has been helpful for you. Sorry I was a little bit uh, skeptical about what I was dropping in there. Uh, but hopefully it's been beneficial and informative. And let me know if it has. If it hasn't, what you'd like to see in the future. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share if you don't mind. It helps me progress the channel. And as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.